Well, good morning, beautiful. I'm coming to you again live from Facebook and Instagram. And um, I wanted to make a video this morning addressing a question that someone had had in the Painted Yogi around, um, you know, how do you unhook from judging other people so that you can stop putting your ideas and agendas on them and you can actually start um, enjoying them instead? So if like you have someone in your life that means something to you and you've got this way with this person in which you're, you're judging them and it's showing up and creating friction in your relationship, um, then keep watching. This is especially for you. Ah, before we dive in, we'll do what we often do. We'll just take a moment to settle in. I like to take three deep breaths in through my nose and out my mouth, so deep breath in. And exhale, sigh it out. And again, taking a deep breath in through our nose. Exhale, let it go. And one last time, breathing in. Holding at the top of our inhale and sipping a little bit more. And release. Good. And then just feel yourself arrive here. So allowing yourself to really come into your body. You might soften your skin. And then if you can, just allow your awareness, which like, let's just play with this for a second. Your awareness is something that you can always redirect at will. And so you might just notice where your attention is right now. And you might, like, maybe your attention is on your to-do list. Maybe your attention is, your mind is somehow preoccupied with something else that's not here in this moment. So just check out where your mind is. And then notice that the moment of awareness of where your mind is is an opportunity to come back to presence, so that just the awareness of it allows you to be more here, more fully present. And then dropping your awareness down into your low belly and really connecting there and staying connected there as you receive this teaching and anything from it that you're needing to hear today. Because this is important. Relationships are super important. They're like I mean, more and more we're learning. We, we do not heal or grow or develop in isolation. I mean, there used to be this idea that to really heal, hi, Laura, welcome. There used to be this idea to really heal, um, we need to, you know, like go into a cave or, you know, go off on a mountaintop and, and meditate our way to enlightenment or something like that. <laughs> But in truth, you know, our, our growth and our healing and it happens in relationship. And that's often the place where we're most wounded. So relationship is a really, it's a medicinal crucible. It's like a place where you can really, if you're conscious and you're willing to roll up your sleeves and look at yourself, you can really start to um, transform and heal places that you've been stuck in for a long time. Let me give you an example of this. How do we, well, first let me talk about how do we unhook from judgment? First of all, you can't stop judging. Your mind just does that. It's part of its survival mechanism. So let's just let ourselves off the hook on the whole judgment thing and let's just own we all judge. I do and so do you. We're judging all the time. Is this thing, and pretty much our judgments are around, you know, is this, going to bring me pleasure? Is it going to bring me pain? Or do I just not care either way about it? And we tend to pursue those things that bring us pleasure and we move away from things that we think will bring us pain. This is the sticky piece here. Because the problem with that sort of strategy is that you will live your life um, in the shallows. 
you will live your life skimming the surface, never truly satisfied. It's like, you know, it's like when you eat, um, it, I like this, you know, it's akin to drinking salt water to, to satisfy your thirst. It just leaves you more thirsty. Or, you know, when you eat chips, like you just want to eat more. So, um, running away from, from discomfort is a losing strategy, especially if you're up to growth. Hey, Miss B, Melissa Botton. Um, so good to see you. And so, um, we have to be willing, we have to be willing to, uh, step into some discomfort if we really want to unhook from judging others because when we judge others and we live inside that judgment we are either in relationship right I mean we're either up here when we're judging or we're down here and what we want to do so that we can really start to relate to someone which is so incredibly healing we want to start to come and even the playing field and when we're judging we're not so it's not that we stop judging, but we learn to unhook. And how does that happen? <laughs> well, the first thing we need is to be aware and conscious. And I'll give you an example of this in my life. So with my husband, this is really actually quite um, deep for me. Um, something that used to really trigger me with him and that I would judge him, I would judge him so much for was his love of napping. He loves to nap. The man, I've known him for 17 years. He still loves to nap. And when we were first together, I judged it. I used to think he was, um, my narrative was, um, you know, he's doesn't take good enough care of himself. He's lazy, um, irresponsible. It would bring up all this judgment. All the guy was doing was napping. Hey, Sue, welcome. Um, and so this is the first piece of unhooking. You want to get clear about what you're judging. So think about someone right now, really apply this right now in your life, someone that you have a rub with. And think about what your judgment is on them. It's something like, he should be more, or, or they shouldn't do this, or they should do that. And like, if you could just get one judgment down even right now, that would be amazing, you know, just so that you can really take something of value with you today. And so for me, it was, you know, he's irresponsible and lazy. That was my judgment on him. And, and then we have to, we want to look deeper and we want to start to sense, okay, what's the emotion under that? You guys know, if you work with me, you know, um, I have my notifications on my computer and my computer's new and I'm still having a hard time figuring out how to turn it off. So sorry for the beeping. Um, and so I had to go and start to feel the emotion under it. And it was so interesting because under the emotion, like I noticed he would, you know, go to take his nap and I would feel frightened and I'm like, wow, I'm scared. So get under the emotion, notice what emotions coming up. It would be, it was frightened, but then I'd be annoyed and irritated. Like the judgment is probably coming from some variation of anger, irritation, annoyance, something like that could be, or um, or it could be coming from fear. If you're like hyper focused on another person in your life who maybe is struggling and you're trying to help them or um, fix them, um, get them better, uh, the, the, the fear might be more available to you. And so that's the next step feel, feel. So I let myself feel the fear. And I was like, wow, you know, it was really challenging to feel it. And then as I was feeling into the fear, I started to realize something that was really important in me unhooking from this. That's like made my relationship with my husband so much more um, like joyful because I'll get to that in a moment. Um, I started to realize that the same thing and then start to notice who does it remind you of? And it probably reminds you either more of your mom or your dad. Um, or a primary caregiver in your life. Because I had my mom, my dad, but I also had some some important, like pivotal people in my life that were also helping to take care of me and my sister. My parents were quite young when they had both of us. And so um, who does it remind you of? And when I really looked at that, I ah, it reminded me first both of both of my parents, primarily my mom, 
guess what? Bless my mom. My mom's amazing. You know, she's been sober for a really long time now, but she was in active drug and alcohol addiction throughout most of my growing up years. She used to sleep all the time. And when I saw that, I, bingo, I mean, no wonder I would start to feel, right? Like, oh good, I'm, yeah, if this is landing, let me know, comment or give me a thumbs up or hearts or whatever. I don't know if you, you can't really do that on Instagram, but when I saw that, it was huge because I was like, wow, I was able to see my reactivity because I'd get really upset with him and my reactivity, hey, Carrie, hey, Carrie, welcome. Um, my reactivity was based on the fact that it was reminding me an old impression or memory was coming up in my body that I hadn't processed and integrated. This is where a coach comes in, you guys. So I was able to take this whole thing to, you know, my teacher and help unpack it, um, with me so that I was able to process and feel those feelings I couldn't feel when I was a kid, which was a lot of deep, deep, deep fear and then sadness and just like letting myself feel that. So that was the first piece of unhooking. And again, you know, um, you don't have to do this alone. It's actually a lot to ask of yourself to do alone, but this can help you at least get some insight and some awareness. And if it's not a strong trigger with someone that you're working with right now, like if it's just a little judgment, it can be, this process can be a lot, you know, you can, you can do it on your own with more ease. And so, and you might need help just seeing, like, it was like, for me, it was like coming from, you know, that thing, like my mom, wow, right? So sometimes we just need help seeing that. When we can do that, stuff starts to loosen up a whole lot. And now, <laughs> and now I'm more in touch with the present moment, and I'm actually beginning to relate to my husband in present moment time not as the irresponsible and lazy person that I was judging him to be, which is what I used to judge my mom to be, by the way. Um, she really hid her drug use quite well for a while until she couldn't anymore. And so growing up, I didn't really understand why she needed so much sleep. I just thought, there's something wrong with this woman. You know, she's irresponsible and lazy and good grief. I never wanted anyone to think that about me. Here's part two. You got to start to own the places where you're judging the other person and yourself, right? So I had to start to look at where in my life am I irresponsible and lazy. And I wouldn't even let myself be either of those things, though there was a part of me, because we're human, that, that really needs space and permission to just be a little irresponsible and lazy, right? I mean, shoot. So I had to look at that and notice how harshly I was judging that in myself because it was frightening to me, it meant something scary. But now that I saw where that was coming from, a lot of it started to shift. So I hope this is helping you. So we start, want to start to just own like, yeah, where can I be irresponsible and lazy? And like, like really look at that. Oh yeah, okay, I can, I'm sometimes irresponsible in my words with my friends. Like I was able to look at that and own that. Like that was the truth for me at that time. I've improved a lot more on that, but I would just like back out of things if I didn't feel like it. <laughs> I would make commitments and back out. And so that's kind of irresponsible and a little lazy too, right? Because I'm just not wanting to um, step into, you know, a higher part of myself. Hey, Rebecca Rose, welcome. It's good to see you here on Instagram Live. Um, so, uh, yeah. And so that's the next piece. And then the last piece is, and so when I started to do that, guess what? My judgment around him softened up quite a bit. A lot, actually, you know? I mean, this is such a healing opportunity. I hope you're getting this when we're judging others. Such a healing opportunity. Now, the next piece is request. It could very well be this person is maybe overstepping a boundary or um, you have a request of them that you need to make that would make things easier for you when you can own it and say, as I did, babe, Myron, I'm noticing like one of the reasons that, and so I'm, I'm doing this, like I'm, this is how, you know, we work this out and make a request. I'm noticing that when you nap, you know how I get on your case and I get annoyed and irritated and bitchy? Well, I'm noticing that that reminds me of like when I was a kid, my mom used to sleep all the time. 
And so it's bringing up some hard feelings for me. And I'm wondering if it would be okay with you if you would um, just let me know how long you're going to sleep and what time I can expect you up. For me. <laughs> Because there's something in me that would be um, would feel more safe and secure. That's such a different conversation than you're like, what's wrong with you, right? Like, why are why do you need a nap all the time? Like, maybe what's maybe you should like change your diet or get more exercise or like, you know, it could turn into this whole thing. I'm the one that's putting all of this into this relationship and blah 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 blah. It would go there. And so instead, much different conversation is say, I need this for me to feel safe. What do you think of that? And guess what? He was totally on board. <laughs> and so now when my husband, well, he doesn't take a nap during the day during the week. Well, actually he loves to take a little, a brief cat nap when he gets home from work. He's a high school teacher. So his job's quite demanding energetically. And he likes, if he can, to come home and take a nap. But he tells me, first he asks, if that would be okay. And I have to check in with myself and like feel if there's an honest yes there. And if there is, he tells me what time he'll be done. And so, and we have kind of an agreement around what that looks like for me, which is okay for me. But see, he's not coming from it from a place of like, he's wrong or bad and he needs to do this because he's, you know, irresponsible and needs, well, you know, it's not for, it's like, oh, Karina's got this thing. <laughs> it's called... Um, she needs certain boundaries and, and, and stuff around sleeping my nap schedule or whatever. And I love her. So I'm going to honor that. It could be the person's like, no, I can't do that for you. But either way, you know, we want to be unattached to outcome as best as we can be. I mean, we can be upset if the person doesn't agree, but, um, you know, I, I think you'll find that when you take this approach, if you've no, you're noticing that you're judging others, that things will go a lot more smoothly for you. And this is a very, you know, this is a deep process that I've unpacked with you. And hopefully it brings you some relief today and some clarity around something that someone maybe you're having an, a, a something with. Um, if it does, please comment, like, or share this video. I would really appreciate that because it encourages me to keep coming back here. This ain't easy for me. You know, I show up and just show up and I make time for you guys because if I know I'm serving, if I know this is a value and it's going to bring you some peace in a relationship in your life, then it's like worth it for me to show up even if it's just one person. But if it's not landing or if it's not that important, like, I'd rather, you know what I mean? I have other things I could be doing. So it really um, encourages me when you like and share and comment. Um, last but not least, I am, um, my calendar is open right now as I'm in an enrollment period for my current, uh, for my program, my transformational program. Um, so if you feel like getting support in this particular area or in some other area of your life, maybe you're feeling hooked in negative beliefs and um, limiting emotions in some areas of your life, or maybe you just want to learn how to be more present and available and, you know, tap into the d deep well of ease and peace within you, um, uh, schedule a session with me, Karina Nickerson at gmail.com on Facebook, Karina Nickerson at gmail.com on Instagram. You can find it on my profile on Facebook. I left it in the, um, that little box with all the, the comment not the comment box, but the, the, the copy, the, anyway, you know, it's on there. <laughs> it's on there. Um, you know, schedule a session. The first one is absolutely free. There's completely no obligation. Um, not everyone is right for my work, but you might be, and it might be the thing that you're really needing. And, you know, even just one session sometimes can be a, a real game changer for people. So, um, I hear that often. So, uh, do take me up on that offer because it won't be around for much longer. And, uh, I hope you have a beautiful blessed day and, um, so nice to be with you. All right. Namaste.